the worst possible situation is where the modern buildings grow up around the historical buildings. This is terrible. Because for this whole section, we are only allowed to use one straight thing to separate the red from the blue. Where are we going to put it? Okay, let's try out our previous support vector classifier. And it suggests because we have more modern buildings than historical buildings, why don't we put the line up there in the top right hand corner at plus infinity plus infinity. Call everything modern and be done with it. <laughs> That's a little better than calling everything historical and be done with it. Can we do better? We want one more upgrade to support vector machines. And what we will rely on is called the kernel trick. And to explain the kernel trick to you, I have a prop. My trusty cloud, it's a cloud towel. Oh yeah, my towel of the kernel trick. Now I need you to use imagination, do your best, and imagine this same thing on my towel. Red ones in the center, blue ones around them. And you need to use a straight thing, a line, a plane, a hyperplane, whatever, to separate the red from the blue. And you look at this and you look at this and you get angrier and angrier and greener and greener until eventually you have become the Incredible Hulk. And the only solution you can think of is to punch the thing because it angers you. And what you do is you punch the space, adding an extra dimension and converting your other axes. And now I can use a plane to decapitate this thing because the red is now above the blue. So that is what the kernel trick is. And let me show you another plot of that. So here I had some data points. I then make a punch and project them into more dimensions. And in this new space, I can use a plane to cut. So I'm still using a straight thing and I'm still using support vectors. It's all the same business from the previous step. It's just I have transformed the underlying space first. And then once I've done the cutting, I can project down my solution back to the original coordinates. It looks like I used a circle. I really didn't. I used a straight thing. I just, I just punched the towel first. So when frustrated, punch the towel. And at this point, my Google engineers are like, this is the most technical thing you have talked about all day. Tell me more about kernels. Give me all the equations. I have to be like, no. <laughs> Read a textbook. That's not in the scope of this thing. But then I think, okay, I can't just leave them hanging. I should maybe point them to an educational resource. And I thought to myself, the internet is a magical place, a marvelous place. This is called the kernel trick, yes? I wonder, I really wonder, is there a website called OneWeirdKernelTrick.com? And it turns out that there is such a website. And it is in fact run by someone with a sense of humor who has put real learning resources on there. That, for example, is Vladimir Vapnik, who's one of the um, co-authors of the original Sport Vector Machines paper. And the other co-author is our head of research in New York, Corinna Cortez. And her face is also on there, uh, along with a lot of other stuff you can go read if you're interested. So OneWeirdKernelTrick.com. And when we do an SVM plot in R, we can see that we have much better training performance, only one mistake. So that's our final method. We're like the Incredible Hulk. We punch the space because we get so frustrated. We add a dimension. We transform the original dimensions also as part of doing that. And then we chop it still with a straight thing, project it back down, call it done. So when are you going to try this thing? If you've got binary labels, if you want a flexible boundary shape, not just linear, and this is a solution that lends itself best to moderate scale. If you're working with really 
large scale. There's another method we'll look at later, logistic regression, where at Google we have done more engineering effort to make that one scale friendly than this one. So you'll prefer logistic regression at larger scale. <laughs>